Hello everyone, I'm Burphy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded sports cars in terms of lap time. We're quickly going to go over the slowest vehicles right now and as always the position counter is in the top left with the best lap time the car achieved in the top right. This video only focuses on track performance so if you're interested in top speed where braking, cornering and acceleration aren't relevant, check the link in the description for the top speed testing series and if you want to know more information about this testing including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally, have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. So we've got the, the, the sports class is huge, all right, 44 vehicles is absolutely massive. It is tying with the largest class in the game with the motorbikes class. You can kind of understand the motorbikes class having that many vehicles because it's one class for a specific type of vehicle. All motorbikes are in there, whereas cars are sort of stretched out across different classes. But to have 44 vehicles in the sports class is absolutely ridiculous. And it's a clear case of just one of those classes, probably along with muscles as well, which the video will see next week of vehicles that should have really gone into different classes just getting put in the sports class because it's the most common one and, and something that people will generally buy cars for. So the first few vehicles that we're seeing in this video obviously we're going quickly through them like we always do the first few up to the at least 20th place they're really really far off the pace you know their lap times although we're already into the sort of one minute eight one minute nine levels which isn't too bad they're way way off the pace of the eventual eventual top cars that we'll see and in such a competitive class where there are a lot of vehicles that are a lot more quicker the, 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 there's just no point in having these vehicles in, in a racing situation at least you're never going to do very well in a Furore GT for example which is one of the few vehicles that doesn't get the benefit of a spoiler obviously you need a spoiler on all of these vehicles to get the increased traction um, as always you know that, that is just a standard thing with vehicles in GTA you will see the traction bar increase in Los Santos Customs when that extra traction boost does apply and that does increase cornering speeds. The Rapid GT and the Rapid GT Cabrio that we've just saw there, they, they are exactly the same vehicle. There's no difference between them, but I have put them both in because technically they are separate in terms of their body shape and things like that, but they, they are actually the same underneath. Um, and the Drift Tampa in, in 31st place is pretty much the perfect example of a vehicle that would do a lot better in the muscle cars class. It would be right up there at the very top of the muscle cars class in terms of performance if it was in there, but because it's in the sports class, it, it doesn't really have anything going for it. Same with the Buffalo S and the Buffaloes, and all these cars really don't really have a lot going for them. There is a sort of a mini rally class within the sports class which is quite good you know you've got the Omnis here with a 107.6 the Karuma is short we're going to be seeing shortly the, Ar the Armored Karuma a little bit further back is possible to use as well um, and also the Tropos that we'll see very shortly as well you know there, we, there are some rally vehicles in there it's a shame we don't have the Sultan RS along with that which is in the supercars class but um, yeah, it, it, there are some interesting vehicles in the sports class and it's just a shame that there are so many of them that they aren't spread across a few more different classes like a rally class, class for example, or, or you know, just putting them into different classes so they get a bit more use. But ultimately, these are all the lap times that we get. Obviously, I couldn't do this video without mentioning the links that we just saw a few positions ago the most expensive sports car in the game by far with 1.7 million it doesn't even break into the top 25 it is very very slow and certainly not worth the money to anybody who spends that amount of money on a sports car and, and it's a lot more expensive than a lot of cars that are faster than it both in the sports class and even in the supercars class as well so we're coming into the top 20 we've seen the the Corquette the Banshee the Sultan sort of classic vehicles that were, were in the game when it was first released and then in 20th place we have the Alpha. Alpha is quite a nice vehicle to drive it, it's quite stable it's quite nice to, but it just doesn't have that overall pace that some of the top sports cars do. Having said that the 105.7 that it gets is still a very good lap time and the lap times that we're seeing from this point on from the Alpha from the Carbon Azure here in 19th place are all quick lap times. These are all quick vehicles and considering some of them are pretty cheap as well in terms of how much they cost you can certainly do a lot worse with, uh, with with just you know being able to find a quick vehicle for a small amount of money. The the Falira here in 18th place with a one of 5.6 just beating out the Carbon is there. We've got quite a few vehicles already around this area that have very very close lap times as well. Obviously a 105.6 again for the Comet Retro. That's three vehicles that all have a 105.6. This is the 
one of the newest vehicles in this uh, in this class so far doesn't do too great and it is actually slower than the regular Comet as you can see here the Comet is in 16th place with the Comet Retro Custom being in 17th so if you do take a Comet and upgrade it into Benny's make sure that you're doing it for the uh, for, for the, the added benefits in terms of the visuals not the performance because the Comet Retro Custom is slower than the regular Comet um, but it, and it also is a lot harder to drive as well. Now in 15th place we've got the shaft of V12 with a 1 of 5.1, again pretty much uh, almost the same lap time as what we just saw from the Comet. Not too bad there from the shaft of V12 it, and as we'll see in the top speed testing video tomorrow it's very good there as well. And in 14th place we've got the Spectre Custom, another custom vehicle, another Benny's upgradable vehicle that is slower than its regular counterpart. Obviously we've seen the Spectre Custom first here and I will be coming out with a video hopefully this weekend on Sunday after we've done the top the top speed testing tomorrow for the sport class that explains why that is. Same for the Italy GTB uh, in the supercars class and I'll go in depth and explain exactly why that is the case. In 13th place here we've got the 770. Pretty decent car this one. We're getting into the 1 minute 4 lap times now and that's very very quick still quite a way off the ultimate top but we are getting up there and we've got an old uh, an old vehicle here with the Serrano still able to get a good lap time with a 104.5 a tiny bit quicker than the 770 and at this point we're getting to vehicles that are very very capable they may not necessarily be the best vehicles in the class and they may have a little bit of a weakness in terms of traction cornering grip or top speed or something but the, the lap times that they get are still very very good and in anything other than really high level races you could certainly do very well with a wide variety of the vehicles that we're seeing around this area. The Spectre is in 11th place just missing out on the top 10 with a 104.3 you know very very good lap time that and in 10th place we've got the Best Year GTS with a very good lap time of a 104.3 again uh, very similar to the, the Spectre in terms of lap time very very close between the two of them and yeah, it's, it's quite a capable car, this. The best year GTS, it doesn't look too much like a regular sports car, you would say, but it's a very, very capable car, and, it, and yeah, it gets a good lap time for that. Now, in ninth place, we've got the 9F Cabrio, and the best year GTS kind of marks the final single vehicle because the top 10 is full of doubles. The 9F Cabrio is the first of that with a 104.1, this is pretty much exactly the same as the regular 9F under the hood, but it does have a different body style and a different engine placement, and that does mean that it's a little bit easier to drive the Cabrio version compared to the regular 9F. Ultimately, they will produce the same lap times, but you can probably be a little bit more consistent with the Cabrio version, but they are, you know, as near as Mason makes no difference the same. 104.1 for both of them. And like I said, this marks the start of a, a few double vehicles in this. So the top 10 is pretty much really a top six, just different variations of the same vehicle. In seventh place, we've got the Massacro. Still a very capable vehicle with a 103.8, the first vehicle to get into the 103s. Obviously at this point, we're beating some supercars in terms of lap time as well. So these are very quick vehicles and the Massacro does suffer in terms of cornering speed. It is probably the worst in the top 10 in terms of cornering grip. So keep that in mind for if you need a, a car for a track that has a lot of corners, the Massacro isn't going to do very well. But it does have very good engine power, so it does have a high top speed. The Massacro uh, is in 7th, the Massacro race car is in 6th. A little bit further ahead in terms of lap time, but almost exactly the same. The Massacro race car has a tiny improvement in terms of grip and traction, but ultimately it's not enough to really make a huge difference in terms of lap time. In fifth place, the top five now, we have the Jester. Jester is a very, very capable vehicle with a 103.7. It's, it, it's, it loves the bumps on city circuits, so it's a good choice in that respect. But it must be kept in mind that there is another version of the Jester that we still haven't seen yet. Again, this whole aspect of double vehicles in the top 10. The Jester with a 103.7 is a very, very quick vehicle beating out the Massacros. But the, the, there is one that will be better than it and you're probably better off going for that one. 
In fourth place, we've got the Elegy Retro Custom. Again, another one of these vehicles that has a double later on down the line. A 103.4, very, very quick lap time from the Elegy Retro Custom, just missing out on the top three. It's very good in terms of acceleration. It's got very, very good traction as well. Its weakness, its main weakness is its top speed. Again, as we'll see in the top speed testing video tomorrow. But uh, overall, it's a very, very quick and very capable vehicle. But we're coming into the top three now. And in third place, we've got the Jester Race Car. So the Jester race car does get a bit more of an advantage over the regular Jester in comparison to what the Masakro race car gets over the regular Masakro. The Jester gets a little bit of increase in traction and a little bit of increase in engine power as well. And ultimately that means it gets a four tenths of a second quicker lap time around the circuit. And it's a, it, it would be my recommendation for beginners, I would say. It's a very easy car to drive. It's an easy car to get the most out of in terms of its lap time it's easy to drive it quickly as well it's just very stable and a very nice car to drive uh, and, and yeah it, it's quite an easy one and it, it's a good vehicle to get started with if you want to have a good quick sports car that you can go do well in now in second place we've got the Feltzer one of the old boys still handling at the top of the sports cars class. Not a DLC vehicle, this was in it when the game was first released. With a 103.2, a little bit quicker than what we saw from the Jester. The Felter is very nice to drive. It's also, it is rear wheel drive, whereas all the other vehicles around us so far have all been all wheel drive, like the Energy Retro Custom and the Jester race car, for example. And for that, you know, you do have to be a little bit careful with the Fauta in some corners, but it is a very smooth vehicle. And again, it, it's it, it's one that I would recommend. I would certainly recommend second and third place, probably over first place, just because in terms of the difficulty that it is to drive them. But ultimately, the number one vehicle in the sports class is miles ahead. It's, of course, the LG RH8, the undefeated champion of the sports class ever since the game first came out. This has always been at the top with a 1 minute 2.529. It's more than half a second quicker than anything else in the class, more than half a second quicker than the next best. The only vehicle in the class to break into the 102s and it's all to do with its cornering speed. Just like the other Anis in the game, which is at the top of the supercars class, it gets its lap time from cornering speed. It's got insane traction. It is a very difficult car to drive though. It's a very difficult car to get the most out of because you've really got to commit to the corners and know what you're doing in terms of racing lines. So again, just like with the supercars class, it's not something that I would necessarily recommend for everybody, but if you can master this car, if you can drive it properly without spinning out and without having any issues and you can drive it consistently on the vast majority of circuits it will be the quickest by far um, and it is the undisputed champion of the sports class and I can't really see them ever introducing something that's quicker than this because it would be supercar levels of pace which the LG already is. So yeah as we see the comparison as we always do between the best and worst in the class I have to say that the sports class has been the biggest pain in the ass to test 44 vehicles. I've gone through and retested every single vehicle and it's been a lot of work this one. It's been stressful and we've got it all to go through again tomorrow with the top speeds of all of these vehicles as always. But yeah, it's it's an interesting class, the sports class, because you've got very, very slow vehicles and obviously the Elegy, which is even more dominant than what we see from the other Anis in the supercars class. But again, just like the supercars class, there is a little bit of balance there because the LG, the Jester race car, and even the Felter aren't really anywhere near the top in terms of top speed. Again, as we'll see tomorrow. So it's, it's again a balancing act of choosing which vehicle is going to be best for which track and also which vehicle is going to be best for you personally because something like the LG is a very, very difficult one to drive. Uh, and it's ultimately which one is going to be the most consistent for you in a racing situation and whatever type of race that you're ultimately doing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the sports class in terms of lap time. Remember to obviously read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful and obviously subscribe for more. We are going through every single class every single week, a brand new class every week with lap time testing videos on a Friday, top speed testing videos on a Saturday, and the playlist will obviously be updated to contain all these videos if you're watching this later on and you just want to binge watch them all in, in a row. So thank you all so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you for all the support and I'll see you next time.